For anybody wondering where I've been the past few months, um, I've been struggling with a job I hate, finally had enough and quit that job, don't worry, a video was coming, and um, school, oh, depression as well. If you're someone who's Gen Z who spent any time on the internet, you have no doubt seen an increasing interest in socialism amongst American teens. But why is this terrifying act of anti-patriotism happening? And why now? Well, that's what I'm going to be discussing in today's video, The New Red Scare. Before we start, there are a few definitions I need to go over, just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Socialism. Noun. Any of various economic and political theories advocating collective or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and distribution of goods. Communism because there's a difference. A system in which goods are owned in common and are available to all as needed. A theory advocating elimination of private property. Now you're probably noticing that these definitions are very similar, and they are. However, they are some differences, as usually communism is a lot more narrowed down than usually to be defined as a government who has a dictator, whereas socialism is insanely broad and like, a decent chunk of Europe can be considered socialism, even though many of them still have different private properties. The difference is the important things like uh, healthcare and infrastructure is in fact managed by the government. Capitalism, an economic system categorized by private or corporate ownership of capital goods, by investments that are determined by private decision and by prices, production, and the distribution of goods that are determined mainly by competition on a free market. Um, also, for the sake of clarity, I am going to be looking at the economic definition as so many of these things can be used in so many different contexts because even though technically capitalism isn't considered like a form of government, um, the way that it sort of becomes synonymous with the US and the way that the government is run, it kind of is. Also, socialism can be a democratic republic which is a very similar method of government that the US has, so that is another way that they are different. Cool. Now that we have that out of the way, when people say that all the young people are turning communist, they are not. They are turning socialist. There is a difference between socialism and communism in the way that the government and the ways are run, mainly because socialism is so hard to pin down. America is technically not a full democracy. As with many things, the ancient Greeks were the founder of democracy. In fact, the word democracy is made up of two Greek words that mean people, domos, and rule, kratos. So it literally means self-governing or self-ruling. Basically, the way that they did it is people would play a direct role in government and government positions. If you didn't like a political leader, you could just vote them directly out. Many, uh, what we would consider to be common or regular people would often play a role in the Senate for at least a few years. Now this doesn't mean that America isn't a democracy at all. Technically it still is. The United States is what we would consider a representative democracy, where you have a few representatives from each state that are representing the state as a whole. So your individual vote technically doesn't mean anything. It is your vote plus everyone else's in your state's vote that cumulatively come together and make a definition. And then all of those votes are counted by whoever your representative is and the highest amount of votes is what we win for that state. That's as good of a definition as you're getting because I'm tired. I spent too much time trying to research just to figure out how this dang thing works. Um, and also it does make a lot more sense to do that way because when you consider the size and the way that ancient Greece worked and the United States, there's no way we could have a true direct democracy because the United States of America is massive. It, it just isn't really plausible, to be completely honest. Also, you are not completely free in America either because there are different laws and regulations. Having freedom is not the same as being completely free. That would be anarchy. Freedoms is not the same as being completely free. You have regulations. You have rules, sister. Why are so many people wanting to switch? 
Well, there are a few things. The first one being disproportionate wealth. According to Forbes, the Fed estimates that the wealthiest 10% of Americans hold more than 88% of available equity in corporations and mutual fund shares. This means things in the stock market and private companies. 10% of the entire United States population owns more than 88% of all businesses and all stocks in the entirety of the country, 10%. And just the top 1% contributes more than the bottom 55%. Even if you aren't a business person or you aren't that familiar with how business works, you're probably aware that that is not a good thing. A sign of a good economy means that things are very equally distributed and things are not equally distributed in this way whatsoever. If all of the rich people were to disappear, the United States stocks and stock market would almost cease to exist overnight. That is how bad of a problem this is. Additionally, three men hold more wealth combined, three singular people, than the bottom 50% of the entire population of the United States of America. Again, let me state it, three, three individuals own more than the bottom 50% of the entire goddamn country. With the average millennial being so poor they'll never be able to afford a house, it's no wonder so many people are wanting to make the switch. All these young Gen Z people are wanting is uh, a livable wage. Greed. Capitalism is built on the idea of a desire for more. Wanting more means that you will work harder in order to achieve that. And in theory, it worked out great. For a while, at least. What do I mean by that? Well, during the Cold War era in the 1950s and 60s, the American economy was booming. It was also the closest to socialist America has been, ironically enough. The concept of the all-American nuclear family was sort of born during this time. Additionally, as can be seen in the book Homeward Bound by Elaine May, she mentions the main reason America was so obsessed with making sure the middle class was as large as possible was so that other countries, as well as America, didn't turn communism. They wanted to make sure capitalism looked like the best option. Honestly, the irony of that when looking at the current economic climate and the number of people that are moving towards the socialism slash communist routes. Because our middle class is disappearing, you buffoons. Not to mention the fact that most of the world actually doesn't like America. Like, it is portrayed to be this great, wonderful, amazing American dream. Yet most of Europe f***ing hates us. But as we've found out recently, that doesn't always work out. Due to the invention of the internet, we have access to any information about any topic at any time. This allows people to know about things they never knew before. For example, the nuclear testing that was performed in Utah and caused thousands of people to have cancer and the fact that the United States government knew exactly what was going to happen but went forward with it anyways because they saw the very small town of St. George, Utah, which was very small at the time, to not be any major threat and they could afford to lose that town because it didn't actually contribute anything. No, I'm not kidding. Now, I did somewhat know about uh, downwinders, as they're called, but I had no idea exactly what was going on. A uh, few different people, as well as I, did sort of know what was going on, but my extent, at least, was that they truly didn't know exactly what bombs did at that moment in time, and it kind of got out of control. And that's very much not what happened. They knew exactly how big the explosion would be, where it would go off, and most likely where it would go. Additionally, it was close enough to the city when you can see the mushroom cloud. If you can see a mushroom cloud, you're close enough for it to affect you. They knowingly shot off this bomb, and thousands of people are still paying for that today. I will link a short little documentary about it in the description if you do want to hear more about it, because it is truly fascinating, and I didn't know about a lot of this stuff. Additionally, we're able to find out information about other countries, and we're learning that uh, some countries are actually doing better than us as much as I hate to admit it. Seriously, have you seen the way that prisons work in other countries? I mean, there are places in Europe that are literally accepting prisoners from other countries because they do so well, they're having to destroy prisons because they don't have enough prisoners. Which is the exact opposite problem that we have here in the States. So, um, get on it, girl. 
you're falling behind. Infrastructure. Electricity is vital to modern life. You cannot live without it. Not today, at least. Not in this world. However, the infrastructure for it hasn't been updated in at least 50 years, if not more. Remember what happened in Texas recently, where we had the massive storm that knocked out power grids all over the place? That could have easily been resolved if they had just updated things and weatherproofed it. Additionally, infrastructure is an aid. We have government programs, or are supposed to have government programs, for things like these that happen. When hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and things happen that disrupt thousands of people, or uh, a mysterious pandemic due to a virus that shall not be named, the government is supposed to have infrastructure in place to help these people. Where is it? I mean, wasn't there supposed to be a second stimulus check coming? Seven months ago? That's still not here? Even after a president who specifically said that they were going to make it happen was elected and then it still didn't happen? Additionally, some people may argue that this is a freak accident. Things like this aren't supposed to be happening, so we don't need to weatherproof them. Well, first of all, again, aid. The government is supposed to be able to step in to provide these people with housing and shelter until we can get these things resolved. And this isn't the first time that this has happened, not even in modern history. Back in 2011, a very similar event happened, which had almost the exact same results. That was like 10 years ago. Still, nothing. Additionally, my favorite YouTube mortician, Caitlin Doughty, Doughty, I still don't know how to pronounce her last name, I'm so sorry, has talked about the immense amount of issues that the funeral industry is facing in California specifically. Now I'm sure it's happening all over the country, but because she is based in California, specifically Los Angeles, that was the main thing she was talking about. In one of her recent videos, she talks about how bodies are piling up. They don't have enough space for them. There are specific procedures and rules that are supposed to happen in, again, accidents like this, where you have an abnormal amount of people dying, where they're able to step in and provide extra refrigeration units and other things in order to keep bodies preserved while you're waiting for the opportunity for them to be buried. But again, the government has done nothing, not on a federal level, not on a state level, and not even on a city level. Which again, the city of Los Angeles specifically has things in place for these very situations that they're not using. Look, at the end of the day, people don't want to abandon capitalism just because. People are, abandon people are abandoning capitalism because capitalism has abandoned them, as much as I hate to admit it. Unless you're the wealthy 1% of Americans, the government doesn't care about you. Do you know how many illegal MLMs are still around simply because they are multi-million dollar companies? I mean, you can easily find lists and lists of them. I mean, there's at least 22 in Utah alone, if not more. But yet, here they are, still in operation, because what? That's right, they're making money. The government is not going to shut something down if it's making money, even if it is against the law in 78 different ways. People are starting to look for other solutions because they're not finding the answers they want. And who are the people who are handling factors the best right now, whether that be economic, social, or political? It's the states that have taken a somewhat more socialist approach. I mean, compared to most of the modern world, who is handling the coronavirus the worst? Who is dealing with global warming the worst? Who has the worst and highest incarceration rate? If you answered the United States of America, you would be right. Capitalism isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, it is a stagnant thing. The way that we teach schooling and imprison people and run our country in as a whole hasn't changed since the Industrial Revolution. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, but the world itself has changed a lot since the Industrial Revolution. Obviously, people are wanting to turn to other ways of governing themselves because the way that they're currently being governed isn't doing anything. The world is changing. And if the United States doesn't act quickly and change along with it, we'll fall behind. And that's just a fact. Capitalism doesn't have to be a bad thing. However, it's turning into a bad thing. Hello everyone, again I want to apologize for disappearing for so long. Uh, the past few months have been... 
Of course, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, ring the bell notification so that you get notified when I post new videos. And of course, if you do have any ideas for what you want me to talk about next, please feel free to let me know. Message me on any of my social medias. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear all of your opinions. Of course, all of my social medias will be linked down in the description like they usually are, as well as all of the sources that I did use for this specific video. Thank you.